How's it going you guys? Well here and today we're taking another look at the Bandai Toys Dream Project Godzilla 1975 and Titanosaurus box set. Yes, that's right you guys, this is actually a re-review, you know, I did review this set like four years ago back in 2017, but for some reason, looking back at it now, I just don't like the location I filmed it at, you know, that coffee table location, every figure I reviewed there, I've always seemed to do a re-review on them, because I look back at it, I'm like, eh, I don't like the location, so here we are you guys, giving a re-review to this really awesome set. Now, I'll be honest, this is one of my favorite things I own in my collection, you know, I've always wanted to own this set ever since I was a kid, so as I got older, started working more, I went ahead, searched the internet like crazy, finally came across this set on eBay, and picked it up for a real good price with the box, figures in great condition, as well as I got the tags as well, so pretty awesome. So we'll look at the tags really quick. Honestly, the tags are nothing special, they're just a single sheet tag, nothing on the back. Uh, I kind of wish they were like the regular Bandai Movie Monster Series figures with the opening folding tags, but hey, what are you going to do? It's too late now. Uh, then real quick, we'll look at the box. Uh, it's a really nice, really nice box. You know, I really love the kind of like the figures on display here. This backdrop here really looks like the final battle of Terra Mech Godzilla. You have Toys Dream Project up there. Uh, just some pictures in the box as well showing the poses you can put the figures in. The back is really cool. I mean, you get to see them with the Solo Jagoken Mech Godzilla right there. Uh, yeah, Solo Jagoken, those are awesome figures. You know, these were like well before SH Monster Arts, they were articulated, they were made of metal. These are awesome figures. And just more there. Nothing really on the sides there, but yeah, really awesome box. You know, Bandai has real good like. Whenever they sell figures that come in boxes, they just make them like so awesome. Like, so yeah, really good collectible piece right there. So that's the box. And I guess first we'll go ahead and we'll look at Godzilla 75. Let's move our tripod down here a bit. So here we have Godzilla 1975, you guys. And honestly, he's just an awesome figure. You already know this, you know, I was so happy to learn that Bandai took their memorial box figure mold and they went ahead and they repainted him with a more proper Godzilla paint job because the memorial box figure has more of a dark green for the skin whereas this one as you see has the classic Godzilla charcoal black but he does have some like greenish kind of gray highlights uh the memorial box figure does have this too but it's hard to make it stand out because it has like a dark green for the skin so I'm really happy that Bandai decided to go back and give Godzilla 75 a more proper charcoal black skin because it just looks really really good on the figure uh, i really love of course the head sculpt as you know the body is the exact same as godzilla 1974 they went ahead and they used the same body sculpt i mean it's pretty easy to see right there so same body sculpt but the head is different you know i really love the godzilla 74 head you know because he kind of looks like he can be a godzilla versus megalon godzilla but you also make him out as a Godzilla vs. Mech Godzilla uh, figure as well. But just what they did with the 1975 Godzilla, you know, giving him the more uh, angrier look. Because we know the 75 suit has a more angry, kind of squinty look to him. That's why I love the 75 Godzilla. So the fact that they're able to capture that in the figure is just awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that's him with 1974 and don't worry you guys these figures these this special pack they're in six inch scale so they'll fit in with any of your other six inch Godzilla figures so just move on to the articulation Godzilla's head can rotate no problem arms can go in and out His legs can rotate uh, was a glue seal on the tail but because I broke the glue seal off my 74 Godzilla I knew where the glue seal was and how to break it so the tail can rotate now I don't always recommend you break the glue seal on your figures because there's a chance you might rip the vinyl and then you have a broken figure. So uh, don't do it if you don't feel comfortable. So yeah, just a little warning there. But yeah, you guys, what else can I say about Godzilla 75? He's just so awesome. Like detail wise, the way his face is, like, you can tell this is a 1975 Godzilla. So I guess now we'll go ahead and we will move on to Titanosaurus. Alright guys, so like Godzilla 75, Titanosaurus is again another repaint slash reissue. Uh, his figure was released in the movie Monster series back in like 2002, 2003-ish. Uh, but his paint job was very different. Uh, as you can see, this Titanosaurus 
has a more like darker red for his skin and like a darker kind of gold. Uh, whereas the Movie Monster series one, the one that came out with a proper tag, has a more brighter uh, red paint job and a really more shinier gold. Uh, the way I like to see is that this Titanosaurus looks like he's more, had like just come out of the water. He's like fresh, wet, and slick. Uh, whereas the Movie Monster series one, that one kind of looks like a more dry kind of paint. Like he's been out in the daylight. And he looks kind of like how Titanosaurus looks at the end of the film where he's fighting Godzilla and met with Mech Godzilla. So that's how I really see the two figures. Honestly, I don't think you can go wrong with either version. Uh, but part of me is always really like the more darker paint of the Toys Dream Project version. As a matter of fact, both Godzilla 75 and Titanosaurus, I feel like Bandai did a better job with the set than they did with the figures that, you know, came out before these. That's just my honest opinion. You know, I like the paint job they gave Godzilla and I like the paint job they gave Titanosaurus. So yeah, Titanosaurus, again, another awesome figure. I love his uh, skin detail. It's actually molded into the figure. Like, this is not painted on. Like, you can feel it. You can feel all the warts on it. It feels pretty cool. Uh, his tongue's actually sticking out there. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> but yeah, they just did a real awesome job with these figures. With the sculpts and then the paint job for these two uh, exclusive set figures. Now, I'm not sure if he was... That this is color accurate but it just looks good on the figure the tail has the same color scheme going on titanosaurus has the same articulation as godzilla well almost head can rotate arms can go you have to pull the arms out though otherwise they'll scrape against the thigh and you do not want a scuffed figure the legs can almost go 360 but they kind of get in the way of the tail uh tail has glue seal on it but with the way this tail looks like how short the tail is I would advise not breaking the glue seal. You know, you don't want to hurt the figure or risk breaking it. So yeah, you guys, what else can we really say about this set other than, other than you know, their paint jobs are really nice. Uh, the sculpt is really nice and they just look good together and they're sized up perfectly with each other, I'd say. All right, let's go ahead and break out. You guys want to see Mechagodzilla, I know you do. All right, so here we are with Bandai Mechagodzilla 1975. Oh yes, and this just looks really awesome. I actually do have these figures on display together, kind of like that, in my apartment somewhere. I'll try to show you guys a picture of it one day. But yeah, I love Terra Mech Godzilla. It's, I think it's one of the more underrated Godzilla movies. Uh, it's just a, such an awesome follow-up to Godzilla vs. Mech Godzilla, because you actually see so much destruction in it, and it's just awesome. It's real. It's it's underrated film, in my opinion. But yeah, these guys scale good with Mech Godzilla. This is the Bandai figure though. I wish I had the Solo Jagokin figure, but it's like hard, so hard to find nowadays. But yeah, you guys, this has been the review for the Toys Dream Project Godzilla 75 and Titanosaurus. Uh, again, really awesome set. If you could find it at a great price, I highly recommend it. Don't pay like over like 200, 300 dollars for this figure. I don't think it's worth that much. Try to get it for like 100 bucks. That's how much I got mine for. It came out to like 108 altogether. But yeah, you guys. All right, I'll see y'all in the next video. Thank you for watching. Again, just a real awesome set right here. If you want, if you're a Showa fan, try to hunt this set down. It'll look good in anyone's collection. All right, guys. I'll see y'all in the next video. Thank y'all for watching. And yeah, we'll see you later, you guys.